Friends, put your hands together to welcome on stage Quizmaster Pig Brain. Hello and a warm welcome to each and every one of you. You're with me, Pig Brain, here today on A Class Apart. It's a memorial quiz for Dr. Mrs. YGP, created by the Padma Shadri Group of Institutions for all students across this nation from classes 6, 7, and 8. They've gone through a grueling journey before they've reached here today. And we've had over 23,000 students registering for this quiz, which has been a phenomenal thing for all of us. Truly appreciate all those of you who are part of this. Tata Consultancy Services, a STEAM ION, which is TCS ION, organized a fabulous online series for them to shortlist and give us the list of contestants who now progress to the quarterfinals. But before I move into the quiz itself, I think it was truly a wonderful gesture by the family of Mrs. YGP, a doyen in herself, a lady who really was a pioneer, a remarkable educator, and a selfless leader. She always wanted people to grow and children to shine. And with that ideology, I think it was perfect for the family and the school to think of institutionalizing an annual quiz in her memory. How better to celebrate the legacy of someone like her than a cerebral celebration. So we here at Grey Caps Knowledge Tribe are truly honored and delighted to be part of this fantastic initiative, which is going to be an annual affair where we will quiz every year in memory of this great educator. But for now, the contest has come down from 24,000 contestants. Uh, we came down to about 400 contestants, which was the second round in the digital evaluation. And from 400, we are now down to 32, which is the quarterfinals across this country. We've got people who've contested from 22 states and four union territories. So it's a huge achievement just to be in the final 32 in my opinion. So, rather than a welcome, I want to start with a congratulation. Congratulations to all of you for getting to where you are currently. We're of course going to start with the first quarter final here today. And as it is all about the youth and it's all about the future of this nation, we've got a young host who's going to take you through the quarter finals. With me here today is a lady. I'll give you a trivia before we move on. She actually shares her name with the pen name that Mrs. YGP used to use. And uh, YGP ma'am used to write under the name Rashmi in those days when she used to write uh, columns in the media. And with me here today is a young host. Uh, she's a fantastic lady. She's been doing phenomenally well in quizzing. She's the only professional woman anchor to have hosted shows in several countries, especially across Asia. And she's arguably the most prolific uh, woman host in this region and, of course, in India. An alumnus of NITK Suratkal, she's been an extremely passionate educator herself, a writer, a former teacher, a poet, but for now, a quiz host. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all those of you who are watching this here today, put your hands together wherever you are to welcome your host, Miss Rashmi Furtado. All yours, Rashmi. Thank you, Big Brain. Well, the best part about this quiz, this is why TV Memorial Quiz, is that the focus is on India. And we have the first quarter finalist here with us, an all girls quarter final. I mean, what a way to start this particular quiz. Welcome to all the future. And let me quickly get into introducing our finalists here today. First up, we have Tanisha Chaudhary from Krishna Public School, Raipur. Next, we have Pritika from St. Paul's English School, Bangalore. Representing Padma Seshadri Bal Bhavan in Chennai, we have Sanjana Bhatt. 
Standing in for Navrashna School, Vadodara, we have Nandini Nair. Next, we have Arunima Das representing VK Patil Memorial School, Pune. Vanya Parolia from Pawar Public School, Mumbai. Following her, we have Aditi Singh from Kamal Junior College, Jamshedpur. And last but not the least, we have Yukta Singh representing Center Point School, Nagpur. That's our lineup for the quarterfinals here today. Let me get into the rules and then into the questions. Rules of the game, guys. We have 10 questions for you. All the questions are common to all of you. All the questions would be on the buzzers. If you know the answer, please press the buzzer. I will call out your name depending on who has pressed the buzzer first. And that person will unmute her mic and then say the answer. Once you press the buzzer, you will not have any time to think about the answer. You will have to immediately answer. Also, when I read out the question, if you press the buzzer, I will stop reading the question right there. Okay? Nothing appears on screen, so you will have to listen to what I have to say to you. Plus one if you get it right, minus one if you get it wrong. Also, at any point in time, as I read out the question, if nobody presses the buzzer for about, say, five to seven seconds, then I will move on to the next question. I will not be waiting beyond that for anyone to press the buzzer. So if all of you are ready, uh, one thing to remember, ladies, is four of you will qualify to the semi-final. This is not about winning the quarter-final here today. It's about qualifying to the semi-final. So please keep that in mind when you play your game. And remember, plus one if you get it right, minus one if you get it wrong. Remember that. Okay. So if all of you are ready, we will get into our quarter-finals. And as you can see, the buzzers are on your screen as well. So there is there's absolute transparency in this game. First question to all of you. If all of you are ready, all the faces look a little nervous. Guys, you can smile a little. Don't worry. The questions are very interesting. Trust me. All right. Great. Smiling faces. First question. Here we go. How many times has India won the ICC Cricket Club? Arunima Das has pressed the buzzer first. Yes, Arunima, you can unmute yourself and speak. Mums, two times the World Cup, I see World Cup. Can you, can you tell me when? Do you have a rough idea of which year? 1983 and 2011. It was between 28 years. After 28 years, we won in 2011. And the captains were uh, MS Tony and Kapil Dev. Well, she knows the entire history. Plus one to you, Arunima. No, no doubt on that at all. Plus one to you. Okay, let's move on to question number two of this particular quarterfinal. Plus one to Arunima there. The game is starting really, really well. Second question. Here we go. Which state would you be in? Which state of India would you be in if you are in Shillong? All right. We have all the buzzers going on there, but Sanjana Bhatt was the first one to press the buzzer. Yes, Sanjana, please unmute yourself and speak. Meghalaya. Meghalaya. Plus one to you. She's absolutely right. Shillong is in Meghalaya. Let's move on to question number three of this game. R.K. Lakshman drew his cartoons in Indian Express or Times of India. Sanjana again on the buzzer. Ah, Sanjana, yes, please unmute yourself and speak. Times of India. Times of India, she's absolutely right. Plus one to you, Sanjana. She gets another plus one there. She's already on two. And we are just on question number three of this particular quarter final. All right, moving on to question number four. Here we go. Tipu Sultan ruled from which famous city in Karnataka? Many buzzers have gone off, but we have Nandini now, your first one to press the buzzer. Yes, Nandini. Ma'am, my sword. My sword, plus one to you. You're absolutely right. Plus one to 
Dr. Nandini there. Mysore is the right answer. Moving on to question number five of this game. Here we go. Which famous battle was fought in 1526 between Babur and the Lodi dynasty? Straight out of the history books, and Sanjana is again on the buzzer. Yes, Sanjana, please unmute yourself. First battle of Panipat. First battle of Panipat. She gets it absolutely right. Plus one to you, Sanjana. She is already on three. We also have Nandini on three and Arunima. Sorry, Nandini on one and Arunima does on one. So three of them are doing pretty well as of now. Halfway through the game, but we have five more questions to go. And there is a lot of chance for many others to play this game well at this point in time. So let's get into question number six. All right, girls, and all of you are ready. Here we go. Which Indian sport is played by throwing the ball at seven stones? Well, in the beginning, I thought these girls are not into sports, but then all the buzzers go off again. All right. Nandini, first one on the buzzer. Please unmute yourself and speak. Ma'am, Pitu. Can you give me a more, um, better known name? Ma'am, Lagori. Could you repeat that? Lagori. You are absolutely right. Nandini, plus one to you. Lagori is the better known name. So that's the reason I sort of nudged you into giving me the right answer. Plus one to you, she's absolutely right. Lagori is the answer I was looking for. Moving on, question number seven of this game. Here we go. The famous dish, sambar, that we all enjoy with idlis. All right, I'm not allowed to finish the question. And Tanisha there is on the buzzer. Yes, Tanisha, go on. Is it Maharaj Sambhaji? Maharaj Sambhaji. How do you know I was not asking for the recipe of Sambha? Because <laughs> I have been in a few times. I'm just kidding. Yes, you're right. It's a GK quiz. And an India quiz, you're absolutely right. Plus one to you, Tanisha. Maharaj Sambhaji. The, the logic or the uh, history being that Samba was named after the king of uh, uh, Sambaji. That is why it gets its name as Samba. At this point in time, we have Tanisha at one, Arunima Das at one, Nandini Nagar at two, and Sanjana leading this quarterfinals at three. We have three more questions to go. Yes, others also can score a lot of points at this point in time, but Probably someone like a Sanjana and Nandini need to think if they really should risk playing the rest of the questions or just maybe wait and watch it out. Let's see how the game unfolds. Moving on to question number eight. Here we go. Le Corbusier, let me spell that out for you. L-E-C-O-R-B-U-S-I-E-R. Le Corbusier, the famous architect, designed which of these things? Stopping me from reading out the options. Tanisha is first one on the buzzer. Yes, Tanisha, please tell me the answer. The city of Chandigarh. City of Chandigarh, she says, and she gets plus one for that. She's absolutely right. Chandigarh is the answer I was looking for. All right, now Tanisha also moves into a plus two zone. Let's see what happens. We have two more questions to go. The next question, here it is. Who wrote the famous poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad and Coromandel Fishers? Sanjana on the buzzer again. Yes, Sanjana, go on. Sarojini Naidu. Plus one to her. Absolutely right. Plus one, Sarojini Naidu is the one who wrote both of these poems. And with this, Sanjana moves to plus four. With one more question remaining, it's quite clear that Sanjana has qualified for the semi-final. But we have many other people to go here. We have Arunama Das who's still on one. If someone else gets a one, then we have a tiebreaker. Let's see how the game unfolds in this last question of the quarter-final. Here we go. Which child of Dhritarashtra 
fought for Pandavas and survived the war. All right, Sanjana not allowing anybody else to answer this question, and she calls out the buzzer again. Yes, Sanjana. Yes, yes. Yutsu, she says plus one to her. She's absolutely right. Plus one, and with this. We come to the end of this particular quarter final. Sanjana is on five, moving to the semi final. There's no doubt about it. We have Nandini Nayar on two. She too moves into the semi final. So does Tanisha and Arunima. So there you go. Four of our quarter finalists who move into the semi final. Thank you so much for being a part of this particular quarter final. And stay tuned because we have the next quarter final coming up. For you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second quarter final of A Class Apart, the YGP Memorial Quiz 2020. To take you through this quarter final, please welcome your host, Miss Rashmi Futado. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the first ever A Class Apart Mrs. YGP Memorial Quiz. And now we are getting into our quarterfinal two. We have completed the first quarterfinal and identified our first four semi-finalists. They played an amazing game, but now it's time to go to the second quarterfinal. Let me introduce you to our quarterfinalists. Here they are. Representing St. Anthony Senior Secondary School from Rajasthan, Udaipur, is Model Bhatia. Model could use a swim? Yes, there she is. That's model for you. Prayed Prabhu from BGS NPS Bangalore. That's him there. Representing the Tagore International School, New Delhi, we have Nidhir Bardhan. Alright, that's Nidhir for you. And next, we have Ava Priyadarshini from DLE Public School, Odisha. Arudra Raghunathan from DBS, Bangalore. Standing in for Bhavan Swithya Mandir, Ernakulam, we have Aman Manoj. Asim Vatsraj from Shri Shri Ravi Shankar Vidya Mandir, Mumbai. And lastly, we have Saksham Jha from Kamal Junior College, Jamshedpur. Alright, for an India quiz, I think we have covered the entire geography and making, making sure that we have participants and finalists from all the regions of this country. So those were our quarterfinalists for the second quarterfinal. And now we will get into our rules. Ten questions common to all. All questions on the buzzer. When I am reading out the question, if any one of you press the buzzer, I will stop reading the question right there. I will call out your name and only after I call out your name will you unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Plus one if you get it right and minus one if you get it wrong. Please understand, once you press the buzzer, you will not have any time to think about the answer. You will have to answer immediately. If you press the buzzer and do not give me an answer, that will also be a minus one. So please be very careful. Secondly, any question that is not buzzed or say I have read out the question, I will wait for about 5 to 7 seconds for one of you to buzz. But if nobody buzzes within that period of time, I will move on to the next question. Alright, I think I have covered all the rules for you. Please be sure and keep this in your mind. Four out of you will get qualified to the semi-final and that is what this quarter-final is all about. Who qualifies to the next round? It is not about winning this game. Okay, so if all of you are ready, let's start with the first question of the second quarter-final. Alright, here we go, the first one. Which of these languages would you find in King Ashoka's edicts? which is the collections of his inscriptions. Your options, Kannada or Prakrit. Well, we have multiple people going on the buzzer there, but Saksham was the first person to go on the buzzer. Yes, Saksham, please unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Prakrit. Plus one to you, he's absolutely right. One of the very old languages, Prakrit. 
and Ashoka's edicts are written in that language. Moving on to question number two, here we go. Who was the court poet of King Harshavardhana who also wrote Harsha Charita? For a moment I thought this was a little difficult but there you go again. We have Asim Vatsaraj going on the buzzer and Asim you can unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Bana Bhat, you are very sure about that. Yes, Plus yes. one to you. Plus one to you, Asim. I was just trying to, I don't know, trying to get you a little unsure about the answer, but you are absolutely right. Bana Bhat is the right answer. So we have two players who are already on plus one. Eight more questions to go. Let's see what happens. Question number three. Here we go. Gol Gombas is the mausoleum of which Indian ruler? We have Arudra going on the buzzer. Yes, Arudra. Adesha. Could you repeat that, Arudra? Adesha. Adesha. You're absolutely right. Plus one to you, Mohammad Adil Shah. That is the answer I was looking for. And he gets it absolutely right. Moving on to question number four. Here we go. Which language was Vande Mataram originally written in? Well, we have multiple buzzers going off there. Wow, wow, okay, we have five of them who have gone on the buzzer, but Saksham is the first one to go there. Yes, Saksham? It was written Bengali. Plus one to you, you are absolutely right. Originally written in Bengali. That's one day Mataram for you. He gets plus one for that. At this point in time, the scores, Saksham is on 2, Asim is on 1 and Arudra is also on 1. And we have completed 4 questions, 6 more to go. Question number 5, here we go. Who founded the rock garden in Chandigarh? Alright, multiple people going on the buzzer there, but Asim is the first one. Asim, you can unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Well, the rock garden of Chandigarh was founded by Nick Chan. Nick Chan, yes. he's absolutely right. Plus one to you. He has absolutely no doubt in the answer he gave. Straightforward, right there. Nick Chan is what I was looking for. Plus one to you. Moving to the next one. Question number six. Here we go. In 1856, the British decided to replace this old-fashioned musket with an Enfield rifle. And this caused a major uprising in the following year. What was this musket called? Okay, you can hear the buzzers going there. Craig is the first on the buzzer. Yes, Craig. The answer is matlock. Could you repeat that, please? Mashlock. Mashlock. Unfortunately, that's not the one I was looking for. The answer is Brown Best. The name of the musket was Brown Best and that was replaced by the Enfield rifle. He gets a minus one on that. But no worries, we still have four more questions to go. We are now moving on to question number seven. This uh, replacement of the rifle actually, does any one of you know what, what uh, revolt did it, uh, what uprising did it cause the, the following the year? Mutiny. You are absolutely right, the Sipon mutiny is what, is what it caused, but the answer is Brown Best. He knows the history, but he probably got confused with the name. Alright, let's move on to question number seven here. The Sambalpuri saris come from which state in India? Arudra going on the buzzer. Are we just missing by a couple of seconds? Yes, Arudra. Odisha. Odisha or Odisha. I give it to you. Plus one. Ava is probably feeling bad that she didn't get it right. Coming from Odisha, she should have got that right. But no worries. That's completely fine. Three more questions to go. Let me quickly give you the score as of now. We have Saksham on two, Asim 
on 2 and we have Arudra on 2. Prerith is on minus 1. Uh, yes, that's about the score for now. But we have 3 more questions to go. And we have we need 4 people to qualify to the semi-final from this quarter-final. So let's see what happens now. Moving to question number 8. Here we go. Which glacier is the source of the river Ganga? I expected this. I expected all of you to go on the buzzer for this. But the first one to go on the buzzer is Aman. Yes, Aman. Uh, Could you repeat that, Aman? Your voice wasn't very clear. Gangotri Glacier. Gangotri Glacier. You're absolutely right. Plus one to you. That is the source or the birthplace of the river Ganga. Moving on, question number 9, the penultimate question of this particular quarter final. Here we go. What is the other name of Mount Godwin Austin? Straight out of their books, so naturally most of them have gone on the buzzer. The first one, Nidhe. Yes, Nidhe. The answer is Mount K2. K2. Plus one to you, you are absolutely right. K2 is the answer I was looking for. One more question to go. Let me quickly see where the scores are on as of now. Saksham on two, Asim on two, I have Arudra on two, Nidhi on one. I also have Aman on one. So technically in the last question, if either Aman or Nidhi press the buzzer and one of them gets it right, then they will make it to the semi-final. But if one of them gets it wrong, automatically the other person goes to the semi-final. Alternately, someone else might press the buzzer and get a plus one. Then we have a three-way tiebreaker. So let's see what happens. The last question of this quarter final. Here we go. On which hill is the Rashtrapati Bhavan located? Wow! I never thought this question would bamboozle our finalists here today. On which hill is the Rashtrapati Bhavan located? May not be something that comes in your textbooks, but this is general knowledge about India and it's our Rashtrapati Bhavan. Oh, I did not expect silence for this particular question. The answer I was looking for is the Rai Sina Hill. That is the answer I was looking for with this particular question. Let me take a look at the score and then we will know what are the tiebreakers that we have today. Alright, without any doubt, we have Saksham Jha, Asim Vatsaraj and we have Arudra qualified to our semi-final. All of them are on two points each, clear winners or rather clear qualifiers to the semi-final. But... I think we have a tiebreaker between Nithi and Aman. Alright, I am a little nervous but our finalists seem to be very very calm. Good for them. Now let's get into our tiebreakers. Okay. In which year did Rabindranath Tagore win the Bharat Ratna? Aman going on the buzzer there. Yes Aman. 1902 is what you are saying when Rabindranath Tagore won the Bharat Ratna? Yes. Alright. Aman, that gives you a minus one, unfortunately, because that was a trick question. Rabindranath Tagore has never won a Bharat Ratna. That was a trick question. Yes, we do understand and all of us know that he's done a lot of work and we probably assume that he's one among those who have won a Bharat Ratna, but he hasn't. So that was a trick question. And because of that, Nidhir now moves on and qualifies to the semi-final. Congratulations, Nidhir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. We have our next semi-finalist moving on to the semi-final two. Four of them identified from this quarter-finals. You stay tuned. We will come back to you with quarter 